Hello, my name is Jack Eisentrout and I am a current senior studying mechanical engineering and minoring in electrical engineering. And today I'll be presenting on my engineering honors capstone, which was completing a full core systems model and designing the manual braking system for the latest woven wind turbine. So for those who don't know, Woven Wind is a student design team that focuses on designing, building, and installing small-scale wind turbines into local educational facilities. And so past partners include the likes of A2 Steam, Ann Arbor Open, the Hands-On Museum, and the current partner is Angel Elementary School. And traditionally, the wind turbines are installed on the roofs of these facilities, and power is routed down uh, to a classroom for an application which students can interact with. So I joined the team back in the winter of 2019, primarily due to my interest in sustainable technologies and my desire to gain more direct mechanical design experience as it pertains to them. Um, but unfortunately, since joining, the team has not been able to complete or install a turbine, primarily uh, from my experience uh, due to poor knowledge transfer from graduating members to their successors, uh, miscommunication between subteams, and general lack of clarity in engineering design. So these are all issues that I hope to fix to some degree, or to help to help fix to some degree with this capstone project. So, so in general, the objectives are to increase the frequency of completing turbines and also increase the quality of those turbines by incorporating best engineering practices. And so to achieve this, um, I first uh, talked with the Woven Wind faculty advisor, Professor Harvey Bell, who is also the faculty advisor for this project. And he proposed creating a course systems model of the turbine, which is essentially a high-level systems engineering platform that takes uh, high-level requirements, uh, breaks them down into subsystem requirements, and then does basic calculations uh, needed to achieve those goals. Um, and I thought that was a great idea, so that is, is one of the things that I did with this project. And another is designing some personal mechanical design deliverable that younger members can use for reference in their mechanical designs um, and just serve an as an example for the future. And so that uh, mechanical deliverable turned into the manual braking system for the blades because it was not being worked on at the time. But essentially that is used anytime uh, we want to do maintenance on the turbine or, or maybe during testing or anytime we want to safely slow down the speed of the blades, uh, this braking system is used. And so uh, both of these deliverables were completed uh, through conducting a literature review, um, accumulating historical information from past turbines, um, performing computer simulations and doing extensive calculations for the mechanical design. Um, but unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the Wilson Center was closed and manufacturing of certain um, uh, braking system components was not able to happen. Um, and general testing of the wind turbine was not able to happen either on the Wilson Center roof. So that's something for the future. But to go through the core systems model, I valued creating the platform um, through something that is uh, familiar, something that's easy to use, something that's adaptable, um, and something that can be uh, duplicated for the initial design of future turbines. And so that platform is a comprehensive Google Sheet with many tabs. Uh, the first tab is establishing those high-level system requirements, uh, which can be uh, categorized, uh, which I categorized here into these uh, seven bullet points because I thought they were the most important. And these requirements get uh, converted into engineering specifications um, uh, and have proper justification for why they're necessary and proposed validation methods for each. Um, for reference, here is the uh, CAD of the latest uh, turbine for Angel Elementary School, and here is a block diagram um, of the wind turbine, breaking it down into uh, subsystems and, and in some cases components. And the highlighted blocks here are the different subteams on Woven Wind, so uh, structure, aero, transmission, electrical, and application. And the blue pathway outlines the general uh, energy flow through the turbine. And so this is another tab on the core systems model displaying the primary metrics uh, calculated for each subsystem, and each subsystem has a tab of their own which I'll go over more later. But essentially, these are the metrics that I deem the most important uh, to be displayed uh, all together in this common display. And they are integrated together through pretty much a huge conservation of energy uh, flow. And it, it starts at the application defining some certain power requirement. Um, and the electrical subteam needs to match that requirement. There are losses in the system due to distribution, uh, AC to DC, and uh, DC to DC conversion, um, which leads to a higher power input to the electrical system needing to be output by the transmission system 
and then you can keep on working back through the efficiencies of the generator um, mechanical transmission system to establish a, a power requirement needed to be produced by the blades which for example could be uh, calculated with in part by the swept area of the blades needed to provide that power um, as it reaches the application down here and also structure calculations are are done to make sure that it can sufficiently hold the weight of the turbine bending load due to the uh, thrust force on the blades and also max what speeds. So each subsystem tab is outlined uh, in this manner with the uh, power requirements out, uh, displayed in this section here on the top left. And so, for example, the output requirement for the electrical um, subsystem would be the uh, desired power for the application and the output for the transmission system would be the input power needed by, needed for the electrical system, and so on and so forth. And the primary metrics are the metrics displayed here, and we uh, and I added useful formulas and uh, websites for components to be purchased, just because that's nice information to have. And then the tab has their large amount of calculations um, for each sub-team uh, here, which, which produce the subsystem primary metrics shown here. And so, I would say in general about 85 to 90 percent of these calculations were done by me from the ground up. There was a blade element model created by a past member using this uh, uh, blade subsystem or subteam uh, block, um, but pretty much everything else was from the ground up. And so moving on to the manual braking system, um, the primary metrics that I used in determining the system were supplying a sufficient torque to fully break the system, uh, being affordable, and also being well documented and reviewed. And so the brake system I went with is actually a modified bike disc brake design called the uh, M2 hydraulic disc brake from, from Clark Cycling. And it features organic brake pad material, it uses mineral oil brake fluid, and has a steel rotor. Uh, total lever to piston ratio of 20, um, and with a radius, rotor radius of 7.5 centimeters, provides about 30 newton meters of comfortable braking torque to the blades, which uh, exceeds the maximum torque uh, estimated to be produced by the blades from that um, core systems model calculations here. Also, it's affordable. It was less than $30 and I have it with me today. So most of the mechanical design um, was done around the fixtures and housing for the brake pad and handle. And so for here on the, on the brake pad, it is uh, the fixture is made up of aluminum uh, slotted pieces mainly bolted together into the base plate but they're slotted so that the proper alignment between the brake disc and the pad can be achieved and also a junction plate um, of sufficient thickness is is used between the rotor and the blade shaft which is supported axially via eclipse and then the uh, housing for the handle is my favorite part because it incorporates so many different uh, manufacturing methods so the brake line is routed down uh, from the uh, pad portion down through the base plate and is guided through these 3D printed um, uh, guide guide uh, pieces, I guess, um, down to the housing for the handle, which is made up of uh, stainless steel sheet metal, um, which is bent and then flanges are welded to the sides and bolted to the underside of the base plate. And the housing is made of two pieces, the, the main housing and then this cover piece. Um, which is on the front side as we're looking at it and it is connected via a magnetic latch which is pretty cool so that when you need to break the system you can just pull on it and you can uh, it detaches and then you squeeze on the lever and it, and it sufficiently breaks the blades and this design was was done in mind to provide great um, introductory um, manufacturing experiences for younger members since Woven Wind is a very young team that they can do to become familiar with a multitude of different manufacturing processes and so the brake rotor is also validated using an FEA simulation through Hyperworks. Um, uh, very refined meshes is, is used as can be seen here, and the maximum loading condition is applied. Um, yet it only uh, resulted in approximately 0.2 MPA of, of stress, maximum stress, which is very far beneath the yield strength of steel, uh, further validating that this uh, rotor can sufficiently um, break, the, break the blades um, without, without fail. So the main drawback of the core systems model uh, is that physical testing couldn't be done to further refine some estimated values in the model, um, since data isn't, isn't known for previous turbines uh, much at the, 
for Simpson model had to be made from the ground up. So it still needs some validation, um, but there is uh, physical testing planned on the Wilson Center roof once the manufacturing is completed and it will be refined then. Um, and like I mentioned before, the manufacturing of certain brake components uh, still need to be done, um, but it will be a great experience for younger members to be exposed to a multitude of different uh, manufacturing processes. And so overall, I really hope these two projects um, can help facilitate um, a quicker uh, manufacturing timeline for the turbine and also produce um, better turbines in the process. And so I would like to thank Professor Harvey Bell for oversight during this project and also specific Woven Wind members for their feed uh, or their input on the course systems model, uh, which definitely made it better. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below and I'll be more than happy to explain more in detail or answer them to um, however best I can. So thank you.